in this lesson, we're going to be going over how we can use the try and accept block to avoid making errors in our program or to actually handle those errors without crashing the program. So to get started, let's go ahead and create a variable called number because we're going to create a very simple calculator as we always do. And of course, we're going to have a while true loop. Now let's go ahead and create some user inputs. And this is going to equal input, which is going to prompt the user to type a number. Then each time they type a number, we're going to we're going to add it to the original number so it gets a total. And we want to convert the user input to a float because as you might recall, input provides us a string and we need to get a float from it. Then we want to go ahead and print the current total each time the user inputs something. And that's just going to be the number. And finally, we want to check if the float of user input is equal to zero, it means the user wants to leave the program so we can break outside of this while loop. Let's go ahead and run it. It's going to say 12. We add 12 again. It's going to say 24. We say ABC. Now we get an exception. The program could not convert a string such as ABC to a float. And this is terrible because we prematurely stopped the program before we actually wanted it to stop. And this is where the try and catch command comes in. So to use the try and catch, all we have to do is apply first a try block, and then you should highlight all of this and indent it. So it goes inside the try block. And then we need to provide an accept. So what try says is try to do whatever's inside this block. If anything fails, go to the accept block. It's kind of like an if else, but it handles errors as well, because if you did this inside an if else, it, the program would still crash. So here we created the accept keyword, which takes an exception, and we're going to log it as an E. So this will just tell us what exception we get when we get it. And here we're going to print, you entered something that is not a number. And we're also going to log this E over here, so we can find out what we did wrong. Now, if we go ahead and run the program, we can do 12, 24.5, and we can also do Mario. It's going to tell us you entered something that is not a number, could not convert string to float. So this is the error message we are interested in. And instead of crashing the program, it's going to go back to the top because this just tells us that we had an error and that we know we had an error. So this is how we decided to handle it instead of telling the program that you should crash. So now we can go ahead and say 12 and we can continue exactly where we left off from the previous print statement. So try and accept is actually very useful anywhere you think you might get an error. And another example would be if your app needs to use some internet connection and there's no internet connection, you can say try to make an internet call. If that fails, then do this over here, which can be something that tries to connect to the internet again. And the only thing you need to make sure of is that you put whatever can cause an error inside the try block. Because if we actually take this float statement outside and we put it over here instead around the input, it's not going to do anything. Because now if we go ahead and enter ABC, it's going to throw an error over here. It's not inside the try block, so it can't catch that exception. That's why you need to make sure you leave all of the possible errors inside the try block. And that just about covers everything you need to know about using the try and accept block. As you can see now, the program works great. If we type in ABV, nothing's gonna go wrong. One, two, three, it's going to add it. Some random text, it's not going to add it. And when we add zero, it's going to end the program at the current total, which was 165. 